Hello everyone, welcome back once again. I'm Nicodemus Kane. Today is September the 6th of 2022. I'm not going to do a uh, Bible reading today and I'm not ready to talk about our trip to uh, Illinois just yet. I am. Uh, it's just an update. I'll just let you guys know what happened. So we've... We went to Illinois. Um, we drove out there on Friday. We stayed out there till Sunday. Got to see a lot of stuff. Really did. Had a good time, and it was it was really fun. We uh, we got to see just about everything we needed to see. Um, first day, we stopped at Angel Mounds down at uh, Evansville. We got to see that. Um, really cool place. Then we went to, well, we had to go to the room next. We, after Angel Mounds, I mean, we, we spent a good amount of time at the Angel Mounds. Uh, but we drove straight through and got to the room where we were staying and, uh, went out and got some dinner, came back. Uh, the second day, Saturday, <laughs> was whenever the, uh, Whenever the heavens decided to open, because it rained all weekend. It started raining early uh, Saturday morning. But we got out, and we got to go to Cahokia. We got out there. We actually got to get out and see a little bit of it. We couldn't get into the... Um, we couldn't get into the Interpretive Center, which is what I really wanted to see. Uh, because they, want, they had the... Uh, you know the the tools that were way too big for a man to use and a lot of other stuff that um some other youtube channels have that they went in and they filmed i wanted to see that stuff but we couldn't do it but we did get to go up on top of monk's mound which was awesome within itself um we got to take a picture of some of the surrounding areas we got to see Woodhenge. we didn't go out into one hedge because it was raining uh, just heavy raining when we first got there it was it was raining pretty bad it was pouring actually really bad but it slowed up as we stayed there so we probably should have gone back to Woodhenge and taken some more pictures but since it even says it's a recreation um how do you even know it's real you know but they've, uh, you know, of course, they even say that that Woodhenge has changed, you know, several times over the years. So, you know, it's a recreation. That's fine. But, you know, I'm looking for as authentic as possible. Of course, you know, again, if modern man is recreating something, then it takes away what was there. But anyways, we got there. We couldn't go to the Interpretive Center. We couldn't take a walk around the grounds. Um, we could only go up to the top of Monk's Mound. And even then, we went up with uh, we went up with uh, Parkas on because it was <laughs> raining. It wasn't raining that bad. We got up. We got up to the top, and it finally stopped raining, which was nice. But it was just wet. The whole thing was wet. Um, but it was it was amazing. It was absolutely incredible. When you stand right beside this thing. It is huge. That's all I can say. It's monstrous. It, it is. It's one of those things that, again, if if someone tells you that it took fifty-one million bags of fifty pounds of dirt over three hundred years to build this thing for somebody that wasn't even born when it started, you need to ask questions because this thing was huge. It was absolutely monstrous. And the story that they tell you versus what you see is it's absurd. It's absolutely absurd. You're, you're telling me you spent all this time building this place so that some chieftain's Great, 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 great grandson can live there. That's the story. That's the story they want you to believe. Is that they built this place just for some chieftain to sit to rule over them. That's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. 
Um, but it was there, you know. And of course, the other story too of uh, you know they moved in in 700 A.D. and then they were gone by 1300 A.D. Yeah, you know, that somewhere in between they were just like, you know what? Let's just start building mounds. Let's just start importing dirt from all over the surrounding states and bring it all to one place. No matter how much time it's going to take us to do this, we're going to build this thing. And I, I don't, I don't buy that. I just don't buy that. It was when you stand at the top of that place and you look down and you see it, you just like, it's incredible. It's absolutely incredible. And there's, there's no way that any chief or ruler of any kind is going to walk up and down that thing. We even said that too, is um, getting up to the top is an experience in itself. Just, uh, you know, slugging it all the way up to the top of that thing. We were out of breath. Of course, we're out of shape, but we were out of breath. Um, I have heard guys that are in shape have had problems getting up there too. And when they found these mounds, there were no stairs on them. There, there was no discernible way to get up. They didn't, you know, I'm sure there were probably stairs. There probably wood or something that's rotted away, you know, over the years. But um, there was one part, and I took pictures of them, and I'm, I'll show them later. Uh, I took pictures of it. The, the slope on the top on, on like the middle, it's actually the middle, the middle layer, the slope on that thing. There's no way anybody could have walked up that because it gets steep. It's like, you know, it's got to be 50, 60 degrees. It's just almost straight down. It's crazy. For anybody, especially any kind of royalty, unless they walked up that thing and they stayed up that thing and they never came down because it just, it's absolutely absurd but we did that and what else do we do Saturday we drove out to um, the emerald site they're the emer emerald mounds there's two mounds that are separated from Cahokia it's supposedly where they started some kind of pilgrimage, some kind of trek. They walked from there all the way over to Cahokia. It took us 30 minutes to drive there. Uh, Lord knows how long it takes to walk that. But we drove all the way out there, and it's a... Uh, it's like farmland. It's just two little hills in the farmland. There's no markers. There's no indication that that's what this is other than the map tells you, you know, this is the Emerald site. And we actually had to wind up driving down somebody's driveway in order to see it. Um, and we could still barely see it. You could see it from the road. But you can't really see it from from anywhere else. But they were, you know, they were just there. They were just two little bumps, two little hills. So I was like, eh, you know, okay. But they're farming it. They farm on top of it. So it's just like, oh, it's, you know, just these two mounds. Nobody cares about it. whatever. But we did that, and then we went to where else did we go to on that? Stuff? We went there, and then we went out to see the Piasol bird. I've been pronouncing this wrong the whole time. It's not Piazza. It's Piasol. Piasol bird. We went out to see the Piasol bird, and thankfully the rain stopped, and the sun came out and started drying everything up. So we went out to see the Piasol bird, and it was incredible. It's a recreation. I get that. So it's not the real thing. But the cave that the bird is in front of is absolutely amazing. No one ever talks about the cave that this bird is is recreated on. 
It's just wild. It's absolutely wild, this cave system. Um, but we got a whole bunch of pictures of that. It was really neat. That was probably the coolest part of the whole day was seeing this, this cave system. It's like... It's set out on the side of a of a sheer cliff, you know, and you could see where they kind of blasted down to open up these these cliffs because they were wanting to put a road around it because it's right on the river. I mean, you can turn around and you can see the uh, the Missouri River right behind you. I think it's a Missouri River. Yeah. Um, but you can tell where they tried to, you know, they wanted to build a road through there, so they had to blast down this whole sheer wall of this cliff. And apparently when they did it, they opened up this whole cave system, this opening, massive opening. It's probably, shoot, man, 50 feet, 50 feet tall cave system. And it's all open up, and it's it's like something out of a video game. It's crazy. Um, when you really look in there, though, it looks, some of those some of the blocks at the very back of this thing, they look uniform. Like they, it looks built. Now, I'm not going to say it is or isn't because uh, my wife was there with me. And she kept saying, no, look, you can see the sedimentary layers. You can see how they, they're thin here and they're thick here. But on the very back of them, they look like nice, perfectly square blocks. And I don't know what that means i don't know why it's like that i just know that it looked fishy to me it looked weird to me that's all i'm saying but it was cool it was really cool we got pictures of that stuff too it's going to take me a second to get all these pictures um uploaded to where i can show you guys uh i can't put them on my computer through uh I can't wire them into my my phone into to the computer anymore because every time I do that for whatever reason it, it keeps crashing. So I'm gonna have to like upload them to Google Drive and then get them on the computer so that we can see them. It's gonna take me a second to do it. We didn't do it last night because when we got in last night we were tired and it was just like you know I don't want to do anything. I could do it tomorrow to be fine. Um. But I will get those up, and I will do videos of these. I will probably do a video per day of when we went out, because I've got plenty of stuff, plenty of stuff to, to show you. Um, anyways, that was Saturday. We got done with the Piasaw bird, and we didn't have anything else. I don't think we did anything else on Saturday. Let me just check to see through my because it's it's crazy the you know the first part of the day whenever we were doing whenever we were doing uh, Cahokia it was all just rain and everything was overcast and nasty and then by the time we took the pictures of the Piasaw bird it was all sunny and you know open and really nice. Um, that was Saturday. We got done. We came home Saturday. Sunday we went. We went out and we went to. Uh, we went down south. So what we did? We did the north first, which was Cahokia and the Piasol and the Emerald site, and then we went south to uh, the Garden of the Gods and the Kincaid Mounds and Cairo, Illinois, and we did the the uh what is it called the convergence i think it was what it was called let me look it up here i got the i got the map here so we went down to cairo and cairo is totally a ghost town i mean it is just it's kind of scary there are people that are still living down there and it's it's not like you know there's it's not like you go down the streets of Philadelphia and you know you see those videos of the streets of Philadelphia where there's just like people out on the side of the street that are drugged out of their mind and crazy it's just it's empty and there's nothing down there and it just gives you this kind of eerie feeling 
and I didn't want to get out of the car. You know, I mean, if it, any kind of city where they have burnt down buildings on the side of the street of the main drag, any kind of place like that where they've they've got stuff that they only want to even try to take care of anymore, I'm not going to get out of the car. I'm, I'm just not doing it. So, um, so we drove through Cairo. There's nothing there, anyways. The only thing that's there is um, just like the there's a sign that says the historic Cairo district or whatever, and it's just everything is abandoned. It's all abandoned, boarded up, boarded up. There's nothing. There's cars that drive through it, and that's about it. Uh, but we went down to I think it's a convergence. I don't remember exactly what it's called. Um, but it's where the Ohio River and the uh, the Missouri River, the confluence, there it is. It's where the Ohio River and the uh, Missouri River come together to make the Mississippi. And so we actually went down there. It's the southernmost tip of Illinois. And you can kind of go down there. It, used to, it looks like it used to be a tourist trap. Um, we argued about the uh, the term tourist trap because tourist traps are supposed to make you come in there so you can buy stuff. And I said, there's a place right here that looks like it used to be a shop. Um, but there is. There's like a, it's like a little two-story stand that you can kind of walk up and you can kind of stand there and you can see all three rivers, you know, where they come together and go out. Um, I'm pretty sure that there were no trees back in the day when this thing was built so you could see everything. But now there's like trees that have grown up and it's kind of hard to see. I took a couple pictures of it. But uh, there used to be a little gift shop in there. You could tell, you know. It was either a gift shop or it was like a, uh, like a snack stand or something. There was something there. So I call it a tourist trap. It was definitely something to try to convince sorry try to try to convince the people to uh come in and check out the stuff but we got to see that we got to walk down to the beach that was there which everything is just eroding away it was a um there used to be like a you could tell there used to be a path that they cemented in there but it's all you know all the rocks and everything have kind of broken this up and um, but I got down in there and, uh, you know, we took pictures, you know, I kind of took, I took videos of everything, just about everything I took videos of and, um, hopefully they turn out. I don't know. I haven't even tried to look at them yet. That's, that's how bad it is. But, uh, but we got down there and we got to look at everything. And of course the skies were nice and dreary. Again, it rained almost all weekend. If it wasn't raining, it was dreary as heck. And we were worried Sunday that we wouldn't be able to do all the stuff we wanted to do because it kept saying there was going to be storms everywhere. And I was like, well, we'll play it by ear. We'll see what happens. If we got to pull out the ponchos again, we'll pull out the ponchos. So, we saw Cairo, we saw the confluence of the rivers, and then we drove out to, where did we go after that? Oh yeah, that's right. So we, we were going to the Kincaid Mounds after that, and the GPS took us across the Ohio River into Kentucky, and while we were in Kentucky, we found a place, what was the name of this place? Um, what was the name of this place? The King Mounds. It's right over the right over the river. There's a, a Wycliffe Mount, Wycliffe, Wycliffe Mounds. That's what it is. Wycliffe Mounds. Um, just over just over the river of Kentucky. Uh, we we grabbed a bunch of brochures. Um, about different places in Kentucky. Apparently, Kentucky is is just as you know just as full of mounds as everybody else or everywhere else. So we're planning another trip. We're going to plan another trip. Maybe not this year, maybe next year. We'll go down to Kentucky and see if we can find any more stuff. But I got a whole bunch of pictures of the visitor center there. We didn't go into the museum. 
um, because we were on a timeline. We actually ran out of time that whole day, but we were on a timeline. It was like, you know, we found it, you know, we stopped, we got to talk to the girls that were in the visitor center a little bit. And, um, you know, they kept pushing us to take the tour. And I was like, nah, we don't have time to do it. But, um, you know, we got to talk to them about what we were doing, where we had been, you know, the things we had seen. And, uh, you know, we said we would definitely go back, just not right now because <laughs> we had other things to do. So we got out of there and we drove out to the um, Kincaid Mounds, which are in southern Illinois, which are a drive and a half. It, the Most of our day was spent driving. I did not think it was going to take that long to drive out to the Kincaid Mounds, but it takes you on these like clay dirt roads. I just, you know, out into the middle of nowhere and you're just driving and driving and you've, you've got to drive slow, especially in my car, you got to drive slow. And uh, it just took forever to get out there. But once we got out there, I, I was, we were both amazed because from what I understood, the Kincaid mounds were just, they were just four humps in a field. That's all I thought they were. You know, I didn't think it was going to be something big, but we got out there and it was pretty amazing. There were five large mounds with one of the mounds being um, at least a couple steps. And it was huge. <laughs> it was, it was probably, I wouldn't say it was as big as the, um, it was definitely not as big as Monk's Mound, but it was, it might've been as big as the mound that we saw in Angel Mounds in Evansville. So it was something, it was something else. I mean, you couldn't go in there, you know, it was all, it was all protected land. They just, they let everything grow up around it. So you can kind of barely kind of see the mounds, but they were, they were there. And I, you know, it was incredible. It was absolutely incredible. The drive out there was incredible to get out there, but we didn't, we didn't know that it was that big of a thing. And for it to be such a blip on the map way out in the middle of nowhere, it was uh, it was pretty cool. It was pretty neat. They had a little thing set up, little info thing set up, and not much was known about them because they nobody had dug into them. I think there was they said one of them they dug into, but I mean it, we learned that we learned that once you dig into a mound, it's dead, it's done. You can't like fill a mound back in and it's going to be the same. It'll never be the same again. So they. Um, they say once you dig a mound, it's it's dead. You, you might as well just wipe it. So, you know, they haven't touched any of these other ones. Now, the Kincaid Mounds, apparently, from what I understand, they've had people get out there, and they've had people dig down into them to try to get stuff out. Um, but they're still out there. You know, they're still, you know, they have to repair them every now and then. But they were big. They were really big. It was really, it was worth the trip, but it took forever. It took forever and a day to get in there. It took forever and a day to get out of there. But we, uh, it was pretty cool. And it was amazing too. So the whole trip, Illinois, almost the entire, we kept joking, the entirety of Illinois is an anti-T-Mobile state because we had almost zero service for the whole trip. We could not get a signal to save our lives. I mean, you could look at a radio tower right there, but you could not get a signal at all. So <laughs> it was, we were so far out. When you go to, to the Kincaid Mounds, we were so far away from any kind of signal, any kind of radio tower, any kind of anything, that we saw... It was a road of butterflies. I've never seen anything like this in my life. Um, and I was saying it's probably because it rained. It was probably because the butterflies were trying to get on the road, probably trying to get water, whatever. Um, 
as you drove down this path while you were out there, it was all these, and we did this too whenever we got out of the car, it was all these little butterflies. These little butterflies, these, you know, these bigger kind of monarch butterflies, but they were everywhere. I, it, as soon as, as soon as we pulled up and we stopped the car, I, apparently we must have rustled some of them up because it's just, everything went crazy. It was just butterflies flying around a car. It was, it was nuts. Absolutely nuts. You open the door and they're like smacking you in the face. I got smacked in the face twice by butterflies. That's never happened before in my life. But as you drive down these roads to get in and out of there, you just, you see all these butterflies on the road. And as you get closer, they just start flying. They just start flying up. It was the most incredible, amazing thing I've ever seen. And I don't know, man, it was, it was nuts. And I kept saying, you know, you only see this whenever you're way, way far away from the radio towers, you know, because they, I still, I still, uh, subscribe to the notion that the radio signals mess with insects. You know, everybody started worrying about the, the, the population of the bees suddenly, you know, dropped dramatically whenever they started putting up the, started putting up the phone towers, the cellular towers. And I agree with that a hundred percent. You know, you put up those, you put up those towers, they start screwing with the insects. What's going to happen? So we were so far removed from everything. That's where the butterflies were living. They're all out there. It's not like you don't, it's, it's not that they all died off. It's that they just moved to all the places that you can't see anymore. That's my theory at any rate. I'm not going to say it's true or not, but that's my theory. And I'm sticking to it. Um, but it was, it was wild. It was absolutely wild to drive down that road. And it was, you know, every time you, every time you went forward, it's just butterflies, whoosh, butterflies, or the caterpillars, the, the mass migration of caterpillars that we saw. It was like, it was a stretch of the road. It was like maybe, maybe 500 feet on this road, maybe even more than that, maybe a quarter mile. I don't even know. It was nothing but caterpillars on this road, just moving across, just, you know, just moving along. And I kept saying, oh man, I'm running over these caterpillars with the car, but they just, you know, you just saw them. It was just, it was constant. It wasn't like a constant stream and it's not like the whole road was filled with these things. But they were everywhere. That was, oh, it was crazy. I wish we would have gotten pictures or videos of that stuff because that stuff was, that stuff was nuts too. But we got all that, and then that was Kincaid Mounds, and then we made it up to the uh, Garden of the Gods. Took forever to get there. The whole trip was going from Cairo to the Garden of the Gods. It took us three hours maybe i don't even know it just seemed to take forever because trying to get out to the kincaid mounds just took forever today um but we got to the garden of the gods it was starting to get late we got some food a uh, nice little country shack out there that we got some food but we got out to the garden of the gods and it was incredible um they want to call it all natural rock formations and i could see it some of them are natural rock formations and you know they say that this is, they were formed because all of that area in Illinois was underwater. And I can agree with that because there are some formations on there that you can see, they look like coral reefs. And I said, you know what, this is, I can believe this. This used to be underwater. I mean, hell, the whole, the whole world used to be underwater at one point in time. So what do you want? Uh, but there were some places, and again, I will show the pictures of these. There were some places where the rocks had these lines on them, these perfectly symmetrical lines down both sides of these rocks that I kept saying, these aren't natural. I said, if this is where the water line was, okay, maybe I could believe it. But for them to be perfectly uniform all the way around, you know, with laser precision, 
all the way down these rocks. The way that it's it was scooped out of these rocks. I don't know, man. It was really weird. And the fact that these rocks were laid in position in the way that they were laid in position, it was it was just I don't know. I don't know what to say about them. But we got to see we got to take the trip, the the hiking trail through this thing. It's a quarter mile, takes about an hour to walk through the whole thing. And you can walk out on the rocks. You can you can walk right out to the edge of the cliff if you wanted to. Um, but they had um, just a massive, massive amount of these rocks. And I got all, all kinds of pictures. We got all kinds of pictures out there. Took as much as many pictures as I could. Uh, that's where the camel rock is. It's a rock that's shaped like a camel. Um, actually. Angie took a better picture of it because she actually climbed out there as much as she could. I, I don't, I don't know what it was. I got out there on those rocks and I was like, I can't. I'm not usually afraid of heights that much, but this time I was just like, no, nah, I, I can't walk out there anymore. It's too much for me. But she got out there. She took a picture of the camel mound from the back. And it looks like a camel because everybody takes a picture of the camel mound from the side. And it's like, oh, yeah, you know, you can see the head and you can see the face and you can all see all this, you know, whatever. I can see it. It's right there. But she took it from another angle and it was like, oh, yeah, oh, that that's a camel. That's straight up. You can see it. It's perfect. So, you know, we got to see that and we got to see, you know, everything else out there. Really interesting rock formations, really interesting uh, geological formations. It was cool. It was really cool. So we went from there and we tried to go out to Giant City, which is, there's another trail that goes through, they say it's it's man-made, where they go through, uh, there's a couple different places that where the rocks have, have are open, and they say it's man-made. I don't know if it's really man-made or not, but we tried to get out there and we got, we got crushed by rain. As soon as we got out of the Garden of the Gods, we started going down the roads to try to get out here. And it's all back roads, you know. It's a, it's all back roads and the you know, we got no service on the on the phones, so we can't tell the weather. We can barely have you know, we barely have the GPS going. And um and we get out here on these these back roads and it's like the sky opened up. It's just rain, pouring ass rain. And I'm like slowly going through here. And as we're going down this road, it just, I keep noticing that we're going downhill more and more as we're going. And I'm starting to see the, the ditches, the drainage ditches on the side of the road starting to fill up. And all I can think of is what happens when these start overflowing into the road. And sure enough, we got to this uh we got to this spot where the water was just pouring off the road and I'm like, oh man, we're not gonna we can make we can make it through that and I'm just hoping that this road turns back, you know, starts going back uphill. And the GPS tells me to go down this road, so I turn down this road and we're we're looking down this road and the whole road is flooded out. And you can just see the water just pouring, just, you know, pouring down this road. And, and my wife is say, saying, you know, we're going to be, we're going to be washed away if we go down this road. There's no way we should go down that. And I was like, I agree. We're not, that's not even, that's not even a possibility at this point. And it just kept pouring down rain and we got turned around and we got going back the road that we were going, it was still just constantly pouring down. I couldn't get a signal, couldn't figure out how to go around it. So we actually had to stop at a church that was out there. And I had to pull out a map. Thank God I, I grabbed that Illinois map at the beginning of the trip. Uh, so I could figure out how to get out of this place. And we got out to another city. And we were just like, you know. We still can't get a signal. Every road on this map that says how to get to the Garden of the Gods goes right back through where we just were. 
So we'd have to go back down into that, you know, where all the water was going. Who knows if that place got flooded out? I don't even know. I just, it was rain upon rain upon rain. And we just kept saying, if there was one place that we missed because we got rained out, that's fine. I, I'm not, it was getting late and we were, you know, we were still, we were two and a half, three hours away from our room <laughs> where we were. And I was like, well, we can, you know, giant city, shh, we'll get it next time. It was just the rain killed us just so much. And it was bad, man. It it was, you don't know how bad the rain actually is until you see it like that. You know, you make that turn and you just see the the road just goes downhill and then both of the drainage ditches on the side and the road behind you is just flood. And it's just the whole thing is water. And it's just like, we're not making that. That's not, you know, I'm not making that in my little, you know, Hyundai Elantra. It's not going to happen. So we, we turned back, we went back to the room and then, you know, Sunday we we got packed up, came home, took us took us a while to come home. We stopped at a couple, you know, just little shops just to, you know, have a place to stop. But then that was it. That was the trip. So, like I said, I will um I'm going to try to get all this stuff together. I'm going to cover it I'm going to cover it more you know, I would probably cover it day by day, you know, like day one, day two, day three. Hopefully these movies will upload. I'm already starting to get upload errors. But this might take a while. <laughs> I'm just saying this might take a while to get all this stuff together. But I'll get it. I'll get it all figured out, and then we will... uh We'll go from there. I'll put it all together and we'll uh, we'll see what's what. I can tell you this much. That again, for the whole trip, when you see all these things, see all these places, see all these mounds, you get that sense of... You get that sense of why. You know, why would you do this? Why would you put so much effort into something like this. Now for the for the normal people of the world, you know, they could just say, well, you know, when you take it, you know, day by day over three hundred years, you know, you could see it happening. Yeah, what else are you gonna do with your life? Well, you've got to spend almost a year all your entire life, you know, making crops, growing crops, feeding your family, you know. Doing whatever it is you can. They had games. They had games and gambling, apparently. Um, in places that, you know, they had places uh, like plazas where they would play these uh, these kind of gambling games. It was uh, called Chunky. You know, they would roll a stone and then you had to throw a spear where you, where you would think that the stone would stop. And they would gamble on this. Um so, you know, they had diversions, sure, but somewhere along the line, somebody said, you know what, let's, let's build this, you know, 30 foot tall <laughs> mound of dirt, and then we'll put our chieftain on top of it. You know, in the case of in the case of Monk's Mound in Cahokia, hey, let's build this, you know, 300 feet. I don't remember exactly how much they said it was. I think it was, a, I think they said it was 100 feet. I think that's what it was. Um, but, you know, let's build this big, huge mound, you know. It's going to take us a while, but our chief's great, 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 great grandson is going to love the hell out of this. <laughs> so you know I mean it doesn't it doesn't make sense it just doesn't make sense 
and I'm not, I don't want to subscribe to the whole thing of, you know, again, they, they didn't have anything else to do. I don't want to subscribe to that. That's ridiculous. You had plenty to do. You had to grow crops. You had to raise a family. You had to do all this other stuff. You had distractions. You had distractions from it. And then suddenly, you know, you still have to haul a 50 pound bag of dirt, you know, up a hill and keep adding to this step pyramid for what? It just doesn't make sense. So anyways, that was our trip. But you get the sense of scale once you get out there. You you have to you have to see it. You have to get out there, you have to see it, you have to understand it. And once you really once you really understand the uh the amount of effort it would take you know there were there were people out there there were just groups of people at all these places except for angel mounds there was nobody in angel mounds because it was a friday everybody was still at work but uh every other place there was all these people that you know they would they would pass by these signs that would tell you you know this happened you know x amount of ways and this is the way this happened and you know you would see him, and they you they would just read it and just kind of move on, not even thinking about you know what it would take, you know how much of your life you would have to dedicate to this, because fifty one million bags of dirt. Let's just say. Let's just say that only the men hauled the dirt, which is probably true because all the women were probably taking care of the kids, you know, doing all the stuff. Let's just say just the men hauled the dirt. 51 million pounds of dirt or bags of dirt. And they were saying at best, Cahokia was 50,000 people out best at best. So Cut that in half, 25,000 men, take a third of that off because kids. I don't think they were putting children to work. So 25, let's just say, let's even go, let's, let's, let's be, let's be modest about it. Let's just say, let's 20,000, 20,000 men. We're hauling 51 million pounds of dirt over 300 years, all for one guy. What is that? You know, not to, not to, again, not to mention that they had to build all these other mounds, not to mention that they had to build this wall, which the wall within itself, I even asked a question, the, the wall was... The ones that we saw, the one wall, the, the stockade is what they called it. The stockade was wooden, and it was like 12 feet tall. It was huge. It was monstrous. And some of, some of, some of the walls were covered in dirt, you know, because, again, they were just savages. All they had was wood and mud. That's all they were making. They could apparently build this huge-ass, you know, a monument of dirt that has somehow lasted for thousands of years, yet all they could work with was mud and dirt to make their houses. Um, but they they made this wall, this stockade, out of wood and mud, and it was like 12 feet tall. It's like, what are you keeping out? You know, I, I get that, that you want to make it twice the size of a man so that they can't stack each other, you know, stack each other on top of each other and do that but it's like what are you trying to keep out it's like why would the why would the Chinese build a 20 foot tall stone wall to keep out you know 5 foot tall Mongolians <laughs> what's, what's the what's the reason what, what is that a thing why is that a thing so you know it it's another one of those 
were what were they fighting? Were they fighting other tribes? Were they fighting giants? I don't know. Why was it that every single one of these these tribes, no matter how far apart, all these Mississippian tribes all believed in the same things. They all held the same rituals. They all held the, the same beliefs and the same gods. They held the same imagery. Yet they all had to build walls like they were fighting someone. It was like, who are they fighting? Are they fighting each other? Is there some other tribes that we don't know about? Some barbarian tribes that are coming in and what is this? You know, there's, there's some other story there that they can't tell because they don't know. That was that was the one part that I was always kind of like, yeah, you know, while you're sitting there going around looking at this, you're just kind of like, who are they fighting? They're telling me that they're going to take, you know, a couple hundred years to make these things. But while they're doing this, you've got this fight going on. You know, they're building these stockades. Why? Why are you building these stockades unless you're fighting somebody? Or somebody's trying to get in. And even then, if you're building a stockade that big to protect your land, that means that whoever's on the other side has as many, if not more men than you do. You are so scared of them that you are willing to put up some kind of a, of a wall in order to keep them out. Because there, there are at least as many of them. If there were less of them than there were of you, you wouldn't be worried about it so much. You know? They would come in, they would try to attack, so you'd be like, Psh, whatever, man, just push them over. You know, but if they had more of you, then you'd build a wall. You'd be prepared. You'd build defenses. So, but they don't know this. They don't know why. They just, they, you know... Some of the places said, well, they were just, you know, they had some, some warring factions that were coming in. They were trying to, you know, do all this stuff. And, and I'm like, warring factions who? Everybody on the Mississippi, they believed in all the same stuff. I saw the same imagery over and over and over. Unless that is, unless that is the American Historical Society, whoever's putting those together, unless that is them saying all these tribes believed in the same thing. Which is a possibility. It's absolutely a possibility. But at the same time, it's like, you know, what? it's the same, it's the same imagery. It's the same stuff. They, they have the same beliefs. You saw the same pottery, the same figures, the same everything. So, are they different? And we're being lied to? Or are they all the same and they were all fighting something that we don't know about? You know, we don't know. We don't even know where these people come from. That's what they kept saying. We don't know where these people came from. They don't know. They don't have any kind of true information. They just kind of, you know, these people kind of came in. They settled on the Mississippi and then they disappeared. And then, you know, all these other tribes moved in after the fact. And they were just like, well, this stuff was already here when we got here. And that's the truth. That's what they say. You know, that's what they say. They say they don't know where all these people came from and that the only reason they call it Cahokia is because the Cahokian Indians were occupying the land at the time. But they don't know where it came from because they were just they were just living here. They didn't know. Yeah. It's weird. It's weird stuff. It's weird stuff. Stuff that we have to we have to ask these questions. What was going on? Why was it going on like this? Was this even happening at the time frame that they tell us it was happening at? It Why would they build these things? Why is there a wall? Who were they fighting? Why was the wall twice the size of a man? Why, you know, why were they all suddenly wiped out, just disappeared like it was nothing? You know, why do they have massive sacrificial burial chambers? <laughs> you know, one of the mounds out in Cahokia supposedly has 200-something bones in it. 
There are 200 something skeletons in it because they mass sacrificed all these virgin women for whatever reason. I don't know. You know, these people, these people worship, weren't worshiping God. I can tell you that much right now. These people were worshiping something else. They were worshiping the sun. I can tell you that because the sun symbolism was everywhere. The spirals, the sun, the spirals, the snakes, uh, the, the, um, the birds, the thunderbirds, the Nisroch. You know, we, I was talking about that a little bit before we left the, uh, the Nisroch, the, the great Eagle God. Yeah, you know, we saw those. We saw winged serpents. We saw winged serpents. We saw um, the Egyptian hand symbols with the eye in the middle of it. Now, I bought a book, uh, the Graham Hancock, um, what was it called? America Before. It's the key to history, the key to Earth's lost civilization, which only has a little bit about what's going on in, in Illinois, but he was talking about the, uh, the symbolism of the hand, the hand with the eye in it. That's it's, um, it's, it's a constellation. It's the constellation of Orion. It's just the hand is flipped upside down. Um, where it's like the, the top of the hand is the belt and then the fingers are like the legs. And I think, I think it was the, uh, the thumb is where the, I think it's what it was. The thumb is where the, you know, where he's pulling the bow back, you know, once his bow sticking out, but that's, that's the constellation of Orion. It's just the bottom half of it. It's the hand and the eye is like the path to enlightenment or whatever that's inside the middle of the hand. And, uh, you see that symbolism out there, um, everywhere. <laughs> it's all over the place. It's usually with the hand with a bunch of snakes coiled around it, a bunch of winged snakes coiled around it. You know, and then we saw the, the little pictographs, the little statues that they make of these bird gods, these little bird men, you know, there's something else to that. You know, you go out to, we went out to the Pius Hall and I even talked to a guy that was out there that he was, he was, you know, we were just kind of chatting while we were looking at this thing. And I was telling him, I said, you know, I'm out here trying to figure out why there's a, a pictograph of a bird on the side of a mountain right here that looks exactly like a, a winged serpent, a dragon, if you will, that an ancient Assyrian god is fighting. You know, why is that a thing? He went away interested. He was he was really uh he kind of seemed like he was taken aback by that. He was like, really? I was like, yeah, go look into it. Marduk fought Tiamat. So hopefully so hopefully I woke that guy up. But um but that's what it is. You know, and when you see these things, you see the scope and the, the level of these things and you really get a sense of what it is. You get the the feeling of the energy of some of these places, um, angel mounds in particular, there was an energy out there. You could feel it. There's something going on. Couldn't feel it so much at Cahokia because it was raining so much. Um, we did. We grounded ourselves. We grounded ourselves at Cahokia. It was amazing. It was pretty amazing. We we got to the top of that hill. And we were both hurting, both hurting, out of breath, couldn't breathe, and I was like. I'm taking my shoes off. <laughs> I'm taking my shoes off walking in, in in the ground. And I I did that and it was like within 30 seconds I was like energized. I was ready to go. I was like, "Oh, this is beautiful." I kept telling her, "Take your shoes off. Take your shoes off. Ground yourself. It's awesome. It's amazing up here." That's what you got to do though. You got to go out to these places. You got to you got to see it. You got to see it. You got to experience it. It was incredible. But again, hopefully I will get these, uh, I will get all these pictures up. It's like I said, for whatever reason, my uh, thing just said that it was failing. That's lovely. So I'll have to go see, go through this and see what did and didn't fail. And, um, hopefully I can figure out what's what. Maybe clean out my Google Drive. I don't know. 
I just can't. I can't do it by. Uh, I can't do it by plugging my phone into the computer anymore because it fails even worse. It's like I'll try to upload one thing and it'll crash. It's stupid. I don't know. It's it's some kind of setting or something in the computer. But I will try again, and I will see. Maybe it was one of those ones. I don't know. We were out there, the Angel Mounds. One of the first ones, that it says it crashed. Probably one of the movies. We were out there at the Angel Mounds, and it was so hot that my phone overheated. Because <laughs> all I kept doing was making videos. and uh, But my phone overheated, and I couldn't take pictures for a while. We had fun, though. It was good. It was a good time. All right. So I'm going to let you guys go. That was just an update what's coming. Um, hopefully hopefully tomorrow I can do day one, and then maybe Thursday. I forget. Today's Tuesday. Thursday I could do, like, day two, and then Friday I'll do day three, and then we can get back to the Bible readings next week. But anyways, um, thank you guys for listening, and um, I will talk to you all later. God bless every one of you. Just like I said, just wanted to keep you updated. All right. So see you guys later.